Hello and welcome to the City.ie's weekly podcast, The Distant Screen, where we'll discuss topics from culture to current affairs, from sports to the high life. I'm Ruan Jones. I'm Ayumi Miyano. And today our podcast is going to be about Studio Ghibli, the long championed leading light in Japanese animation, comparable in excellence and in its reach to Pixar and to Disney. Six out of the top ten Japanese animation films are produced by the studio. Its most famous film, in the West at least, is Spirited Away, which won the 2003 Oscar for Best Animated Film and was the highest grossing Japanese film up to that point. Come March 1st, Netflix are releasing the entire collection of Studio Ghibli films, with several already available. And in honour of their release in the, for the first time, our podcast today is about the cult classic My Neighbour Totoro by Hayao Miyazaki. One of our City.ie journalists and a Japanese native is going to talk through the film as it's a uh, personal favourite of hers. So Ayumi, would you tell me a little bit, first of all, about the plot of the film? Yeah, um, that is a story where one whole family moved to the countryside of Tokyo and the, their mother is in hospital. So three of them, father and two sisters, moved to that old house in the countryside. It's also a two sisters story. They are adventuring in the countryside and they found very big trees. And inside the tree, there is a Totoro the only children can can see because their parents can't see Totoro. So it's for, for, for Japanese children, it's really an um, imaginary story. I, I think I was reading that for, for Japanese children, it's like Totoro is Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. As Winnie the yeah. Pooh is to, to English children, he is to yeah. uh, Totoro is to Japanese children. And watching the film, I, it was it was very notable to me that it's 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 told almost entirely from the two the two children. The, one of the the things that is most remar- remarked upon um, or most remarkable about the Studio Ghibli films is the animation. And uh, I, I I think would you would you tell us a little bit about why, why is it so distinctive and why is it so popular? Um, I guess it's a delicate use of color. Like Hayao Miyazaki, originally, I think he has a respect or the very, uh, he has a respect to the nature, which is also um, deeply in our culture, which is animism or some Buddhism feeling to show a respect or to feel something from the trees or um, greens or oceans or which is our culture so I guess um, Hayao Miyazaki um, captured that scene really well for example in sunny day he used very bright light and then in the late afternoon he he gradually make the light sm- and weaker and weaker and then you can feel that light or temperature as if you were in the movie, you are there in the nature. So which is not, it, especially if you are living in the big city like a Tokyo or Osaka in Japan, um, we can't experience that like feeling from the nature. So that's, that's why that Totoro captures lots of adults' heart as well, not only children. Yeah, and... Um to me, watching it, it, it's very interesting that it blends like full-blown childlike imagination with um, really quite concrete realism. And you, you were saying that there that you can really feel the changes of temperature and and the uh, mood through the animation. And I suppose it's interesting what you're saying about animism because Totoro in the film he he appears, but he's not really treated as something strange or an anomaly. He's completely natural in in the environment. It's it is spiritual, but it's also like you say, it's also something that's deeply in your culture. Yeah, I think so. Um, if we look at Totoro, like big, the biggest Totoro itself, it's actually very scary if we don't know any story background. But because we know story, where um, two sisters always go to the camper camper tree to see Totoro when they are in trouble and Totoro is always there sleeping and then they he he helped 
he helps to to sisters. Mm. And it's it's something that comes a lot in in Miyazaki Hayao Miyazaki, the director of um, My Neighbor Totoro, is one of the possibly the most famous or well known um, contemporary Japanese director. And how how important is he to Japanese film? Um, obviously, the for Japanese people, um, the Hayao Miyazaki is also very the also the person who we are very proud of as a Japanese because of his movie as well as his his um, as I said his feeling towards the movie he's like an artist instead of he's trying to make a business from his movie he's stubborn in a way he's very stubborn because he I guess he still uses a traditional technique like papers or like watercolor or something to describe his that sensitive lights or it greens so He's also anti-capitalist, mm. anti-capitalism. So he is politically accurate towards Japanese government as well. With that, that is not dealing with not dealing with the Fukushima radiation problem so well, or um, they are only thinking about building up new new building or um, houses or try to make money out of expanding the Tokyo or expanding the city but it's at the same time it's destroying the nature for that he's politically very accurate and and he's very important in that way as well and I suppose the last thing that I that struck me as well is that it's a film about two sisters like you know you you have relationships about brothers a lot but this one is is a very personal friendship between two sisters ah, yeah so that's also important point because um, there, there are two sisters. One, that older one is Satsuki, and the younger one is Mei. And Satsuki is always res- very responsible. So, but um, as in contrast, Mei is very different. She is so stubborn and adventurous, and always cry and shout lots of times like typical younger sister. So like for the girls who had sisters, I guess it's very understandable and then very kind of, sometimes we can feel so emotional with it. Okay, well, thank you very much, Yumi. Thank you. If you want to know anything more about Studio Ghibli and some of the films that are being released on Netflix, we'll have uh, a link to an article or else it will just be just below this video about the studio and about some of the films which we really recommend that you go and see. So the first batch, I think the seven or so films, were released on the 1st of February and the rest of Studio Ghibli's collection will be released on March 1st onto Netflix. Oh, I can't wait. (laughs) Okay, thank Thank you you. very much. Bye-bye.